Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. Excited to finally have this young lady on the show. This is Suzanne Doyle Ingram. We're going to talk about how to write a client attracting book and leverage it to grow your business. She's with Promise Prominence Publishing, and she has been so patient and gracious for the rescheduling that we've had to do, but now we have her and we have her attention. Y'all are gonna learn a lot. I know y'all have books in there that you wanna birth out and Suzanne is gonna give you some beautiful, beautiful tips on how to do that. Welcome to the TED Show. How are you today? Thank you, I'm great. I'm so happy this finally happened. It's crazy how busy we both are, but this is wonderful. It, and actually gets even more exciting when you have to reschedule several times. And you're like, <laughs> right? Hey, and you're like, this is gonna be it. But you've been yeah. very gracious and I appreciate that. I love what you do and I love the topic because when I, I say this, uh, I've always had a book that I felt like I wanted to get out. And I think yes. that a lot of people have a lot of things to say, but they don't know the right route. They don't know how to do it. Exactly. Um, you know, a lot of us haven't taken an English class. You know, for me, yeah. it's been 30 years. God knows how much longer. But I think that a lot of people, uh, especially in this day and age, would love to be able to tell their story and their journey. Mm -hmm. So they get to do that verbally and auditorially and a right insight on the TED show. But I think a lot of people would really benefit from the information you're going to share about how to write a client attracting book. So without further ado, Suzanne, I told you before we went live that the audience loves origin stories. So I don't know if you came out of the womb writing. Uh, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about you. Well, it's funny. I just found my high school transcripts because I'm moving some stuff around in my house and I showed my son. I said, hey, look, look at this. My high school transcripts, my last marks for 11th and 12th grade, I got all B's and two C pluses. And he goes, mom, that's <laughs> terrible. You're a book publisher. I said, well, it just shows you, you know, you can always improve. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, I came across writing books in a very strange way. I used to own a marketing agency. And then in 2008, a lot of people that are young don't know how terrible that was. But 2008, 9, 10, the economy was crashing. I was limping along and I thought, I can't, I can't do this. Nobody's spending any money on marketing. So I think what I'll do is just stop. I'm going to write a book. So I decided to write a book. But I had felt like such a failure in my business that I wrote it under a fake name because I thought it would totally fail. And I didn't want anyone to know that it was me. Wow. So I love working with people who, even if they have all the confidence in the world, there comes a time in your writing journey where you're like, wait a second, why am I writing this stupid book anyways? Who's going to buy it? Who's going to read it? Everyone's going to know I'm dumb. And everybody has those insecurities. And I, a lot of what I do, Ted, is helping people see the greatness within themselves. I say to people, I can believe in you and you can borrow my belief until you have it for yourself. Because, because we all, I think we all feel or have experienced imposter syndrome. Totally. And so what you were describing is really that, like we, yeah. we don't think anybody, we have this idea and then all of a sudden we begin to question ourselves. Well, why am I the expert in this? What, who's going to ever want to listen to my story? Exactly. And so you help bring that, out of them, your counselor, your bartender, yeah. your, your, am, pastor, totally. your, your all of these therapy kinds of yes. roles, because yes. you know that, um, well, I tell them about it because you know that when somebody actually gets to see that imprint, yeah. it is it's just amazing. life, it's life changing. Yeah, it is. And you know, I don't subscribe to the school of just sit down and write whatever comes to mind. No, that's going to be a terrible book. So I'm kind of a mixture. One of my clients said to me, you're kind of a mixture of like a mom, a coach and a something whole. <laughs> tough, I call it tough love. That's fair. Tough love. I got it. Um, we'll keep it PG. But the thing is, I, I have a very specific way that I teach people how to write a client attracting book. If you just write a book all about yourself, it's going to come kind of across as arrogant. So it's important to include points of credibility, points of vulnerability. You know, the credibility is there for the reader to go, okay, yeah, this person knows what they're talking about. But then the vulnerability, like, oh yeah, they haven't always had it easy. They also struggled, you know, that makes the reader feel like they're connecting to you. And I, I really believe that we need to write to 
one person who was our ideal client, who was also our ideal reader. So, you know, if I said to once, one time I was teaching one of my courses and I said to one of my clients, who's a chiropractor, you know, who's your ideal client? She goes, anybody with a spine. And I'm like, that's not it. <laughs> I was like, I get why you would say that, but look, you know, I teach people business stuff too. Like, look at your average customer value. Who's your ideal client? Who, who do you enjoy working with the most? What do you love about your business? What do you love to do? So I have a, a six month program where I teach people how to write books and it takes that long. You can't write a book in a weekend and you can't use well, I mean, it takes a lot because honestly, thinking about when I've written, I have a minor in English. So that's, that's the closest yeah, I've go. gotten. I do. I have a minor, a yeah. bachelor's in finance and a minor in English. I love the writing thought process, but yeah. as we get older and we get out of school and we get into our jobs, our careers, our families, um, you, a lot of times we put that aside, uh, and we always know that we have stuff to say, but for some reason it's like riding a bike. I feel like, yeah. uh, it's been so long. If I were to sit down and try to write right now, mm -hmm. I don't know what would come out. Plus mm -hmm. now I have 30 plus years more of perspective. Mm -hmm. And so I'm all over the place. So you kind of help us, you bring it out six months. That is fair. That's a, that's a beautiful, because you're really yeah. pouring into people. Yeah. And you can, I do, I, I do pour my love and my belief into people and I show them the way, you know, I, you have to have an outline, but there's, I make them do a lot of work before the outline, you know, the foundational work where they really think about why are you writing this book? Who are you writing this for? How do you want your reader to feel? What do you want your reader to do? Um, and not, so the book doesn't come across totally salesy, but I do highly recommend you have a call to action in your book, you know, join my LinkedIn group or book a strategy call, like that kind of thing. Right. But not who in your face. But you know, Ted, the problem I think most people have is they have no idea what to write about because they have 20 different things they could possibly write about. But, and if one of your listeners is in that situation, the advice I would give is think about what you love about your business and what you want more of. I, I had a real estate agent once who signed up for our big VIP ghost writing package, the whole kitchen caboodle kitchen sink. And when our first call, I said, she said, I want to write a book for first time home buyers. I said, that's awesome. Tell me what you love about first time home buyers. And it was a zoom call and I could see her face and her face just dropped. And she said, Oh, I hate working with first time. home buyers." <laughs> <laughs> that's an honest realtor right there. <laughs> right. And I said, why are we doing a book for first time home buyers? She said, I thought it would be easy. And I said, but if you don't want more of them, don't put that out there. <laughs> that's what you're going to get, you know? That is so fascinating because honestly, I would have probably, until you just said that, thought the exact same thing. Where, where am I, where should I direct my effort instead of who am I trying to attract? Which yeah. are really can be two totally different things. Mm -hmm. That realtor is very honest, but I guarantee you, somebody probably told her, well, you should write a book, first time home buyers. There's so much of an opportunity there, but that's not really who she's trying to attract. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of, like I said, business coaching that goes into my book coaching, because I think it's really important to end up with a book that you're proud of and that you love and you want to give it out. And a lot of people, when they write a book quickly or they don't have a coach, they, they take some little course that says, here, throw it up on Amazon. And they're not <laughs> proud of it and they haven't set it up correctly. And you can't, it doesn't even work. And I see that all the time. People on LinkedIn say to me, I have a book and I go, I can't find it. Or let me help you with this. You, you know, know, what's interesting now, the older Ted has become a little more uh, direct instead of uh, massaging people, but people will ask me to read some of their books. Um, when I'm on, when I'm on the third sentence and everything is a grammatical error, um, I got to give a little tough love there. And I understand that they're trying or somebody told them it was wonderful. Uh, and maybe it was good from a cathartic perspective. But if they're trying to do client attraction, if this is more than just, yeah. I got to get this out because it's been bothering me for the last 30 years, mm -hmm. you really want it to be purposeful and intentional. Mm -hmm. You have to do a little more. And y'all, in this day and age, there's something called spell check. Yes. So, uh, grammar yeah. check. Um, but I'm amazed at how many people will put things out. Uh, and they haven't really thought through the process, but because they can say now they're on sale at Amazon or maybe they're not anymore, mm -hmm. uh, for them, that's a big deal. And kudos if that's all you wanted to accomplish. But I think yeah. most people can benefit uh, from what services you offer. The rep your reputation matters. I say to my clients, 
my job is to make you look good. So you write your book, you do your thing, I'll guide you all along. And then we have this magical process called editing. <laughs> editing, <laughs> editing, editing. And so that's the thing I say, I tell them, run it through Grammarly.com, it's free, and run it through Spellcheck, then you send it to the editor. You must have an editor. You must, you must, you must. I will not publish it with Prominence Publishing's name on it if it hasn't been edited for that very same reason. And I know, like, I have a degree in linguistics. I'm a word nerd, but I know that 99% of people are not. And many people feel very insecure and embarrassed and ashamed of spelling mistakes and stuff like that. But I'm like, I am terrible at math and I'd be so embarrassed if I had to suddenly do math, right? Please don't quiz me on math right now. But, but everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And even the best writers in the world have editors. So um, it's, it, it's really, I always say, my, my clients, when I'm on a group coaching call with them, and I say this, I said this yesterday, I said, Mark, you haven't sent me your stuff lately. I need to see your stuff. And he goes, okay, well, I might be able to have it to you by Monday. And I go, I don't want you spending the weekend tinkering around on it. Send me your crap. <laughs> He's right. Like, okay. Okay. Right. Well, I, I can see through all of that. That's my job as a, as a publisher and a book coach. So I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's the number one thing that stops people is many people have internal beliefs that they've been holding on for a long, long time. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. People will think I'm stupid. People will wonder if how I even run a business. Like they really worry about these things, even if they don't want to admit it. They do. They get, we all get caught up again, back to imposter syndrome. We, we feel like um, what, who, who deemed us expert? We, we have an opinion on something. We probably have the experience and yet we still question ourselves. Yes. Um, the writing part is just, but to me, a lot of, I, I love to read, you know, we have a lot of short term TikTok ish, yes. uh, all this crazy stuff going on. So uh, people's attention span is less. And so I think that's also where a lot of people get into writer's block. Uh, if the idea and the perfect novel or perfect book doesn't come to them in the first 15 minutes, well, mm -hmm. gosh, I can't put any effort in anymore. That's too much right. for me. Well, but you help, you help right. draw that out of them. Yes, because I teach them how to write a proper outline that is so detailed, they never have writer's block. And in, in fact, some, we talked about this on Wednesday's call where one of my clients in the Netherlands, actually, she, she said, I hope this is okay, but I was working on chapter four and I finished it. And then I looked at chapter five and I went, not today. And so I moved to chapter six. I go, that's totally fine. I've told you that before. You can jump around. There's different sections of your book that you can write. Uh, I mean, if it's a chronological book, which most aren't, uh, it's of course a little bit different, but yeah, absolutely. You're, you should be like a horse at the gate of a starting, a starting gate of a race where you're like, please let me write my book now. Please, 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 please. Because I'm so ready because I've seen people over and over again where they kind of half-ass do an outline and they start writing their book and they're super frustrated and they don't know what to write. And I'm like, start again. You need to get <laughs> your act together. You need a proper outline. And the beautiful thing, Ted, is that when you have a really detailed outline, let's say hypothetically you have 10 chapters, so 10 big headings, and then you have maybe like five to seven subheadings, things you're going to say in the book. This is like a million dollar idea. You're welcome, everybody. And then underneath all of those subheadings, you have like the, what I call like the extra bits, like you might have a personal story or a story about a client or some research or some statistics, your supporting material, right? Let's say hypothetically, that's 10 by 10. That's 100 squares with information from your brain on the page. Couldn't that be 100 LinkedIn articles or Facebook posts? Couldn't that be 100 blog posts? Couldn't you make a one minute video on every single one of those things? Like, isn't that the same outline you're going to use to develop your course? Isn't that the same outline you're going to use for your signature talk? Like, hello, everybody. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's so amazing when you have a plan in place. The book will not just fall out of your brain onto the paper. It won't. You have to have a plan. So I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the subject of um, that I get asked a lot, honestly. And I, I teach a class on chat GPT. Cool. Uh, but it is for re real estate, very real estate oriented. Okay. But I can't tell you how many people and how many articles I'm seeing uh, asking, saying, oh, my God, well, why don't I just throw it into chat GPT? Doesn't that spit out a novel for me? 
Yeah. Um, what do you say? What do you say to those people? Here's With what I love. Say. Here's what I say. I, I've tried it myself. I've tried. I even have this like special extra, extra, extra software that goes with chat GPT, write a book in one click. And it, well, it doesn't work. Um, it sounds too, it's not conversational. It's not you, but I say to people, this goes back to something I was going to mention earlier about, you know, who are you to write a book and why would anybody read it? It's really about ask yourself, why do people choose to work with you? So if you're a coach or a consultant or a realtor, or whatever you are, why do people choose you? Generally, it's because they believe that you're good at what you do. Otherwise, they wouldn't choose you. But they also because they like you and you're you. So your book will be uniquely you. It's unique to you. Where I had my partner recently read my new book that's coming out. And by the way, it's called Everybody Has a Book Except You. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. He goes, I don't know. If, I don't really know if I like the tone here because it sounds like you're talking. I go, hello. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to sound like. Like I'm talking want. to you. So anyways, about chat GPT, it can be useful. Definitely. If I want to put in there, you know, give me a list of five things people worry about when they're thinking about writing a book. Chat GPT is great for stuff like that. And I can make a little blog post about that or whatever. But I really and truly feel I can't help you write a book. It, I wanted to help my clients, like push them along. But we were just talking about it the other day and everybody in my expert author program said, no, I cannot use ChatGPT for this. But, you know, I would like to see how authors can use it for marketing and different things like that, for sure. I think the marketing, I think I think that. Um... I mean, obviously, AI is going to continue to progress and develop and get better and better. But I still think the good old human spirit, soul, uh, mind, uh, I don't know how you're nobody's ever going to be really able to replicate that. So yeah. uh, but I do feel like the marketing side there, there are pluses. And that's what we teach in the class that I teach. It's just uh, how you utilize it and how dependent you become on it. Uh, and it can do a whole bunch of great things, but if you can't turn that into something that is blog oriented or you post or you are, uh, then it's just sitting there in your chat GPT thing on this side of the screen yeah. all the, all the yeah. time. Um, before, as we wrap up, I want to ask, obviously, in my opinion, the first step is to go to you. But <laughs> if somebody if somebody is thinking, OK, but I want to be ready for Suzanne. Yeah. Uh, what, what do they have? What do they have to do? What do they have to know? What should they have together if they want to have a consult with you about writing a book? I love you said. I love that you said get ready because I say to my clients all the time: stop getting ready to get ready. <laughs> um, Amen to that. That's good. Really, I actually love to work with people before they start writing a book because they often throw bits and pieces together or they say to me, I already have a book. It's totally done. It's, it's 17 different blog posts, copy and paste is totally done. I just need you to help me get it on Amazon. And I'm like, I'm sorry. No, that is not a book um, that looks like a bunch of blog posts. And that's great. Like sometimes we can draw on our previous stuff. But for I, I work with people who already have a business. So it's difficult if someone's just trying to figure out what they're doing. Like, I kind of want to be a coach, but I don't know who I'm going to coach. You know, if they already have a business, um, health coaches, business coaches, consultants. Like I said, I've worked with lots of realtors. For some reason, I like the natural health niche, but dog trainers, like everybody. So if they have a business and they, they can book a strategy call with me and just say, do you think a book would fit in with my business? I have a gift to be able to go, I got it. Here's your book. Here's your course. Here's your workshop. Here's your talk. Like, let's go. You know, um, <laughs> not everybody needs all of those things. So I don't like to overwhelm people with that, but I can, I just truly believe a book opens so many doors for you. It really helps people dip their toe in the water without you even realizing it. And they get to, to feel like they know you, they get to see who you are and what you stand for, you know, like heart centered people, yeah. the good guys out there, you know, they really can represent who they are with their book. Agreed. Beautiful. All right. The one and only Suzanne Doyle Ingram. Tell us the best way they can reach you. What, how can they find out more? How can they schedule a consult with you? Let them have it. Well, that's great. Thank you. I have, uh, so my website, prominencepublishing.com. You can go on there. There's like a little quiz you can do about what uh, kind of book you want to write. Um, and you can book a strategy call with me on there. There's a menu item called how we create best-selling authors. You book a call there. I also have a Facebook group. 
um, that's called Book Publishing Made Simple. If you already have a book and you're trying to publish, you know, we help people with self-publishing. We also do full publishing packages for people. And I am, pun intended, I'm an open book uh, when it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to, and sometimes on the strategy calls, I say to people, you're not ready for a book, or I don't think this is going to work. Or, I don't know if we're a good fit. Sometimes I say, I think we're a good fit. And here's how I could see us working together. So there's no pressure. I am not a salesperson. So um just to chat with me, it is very, very helpful. People thank me all the time for these calls where they just kind of set them straight and, and help them it. with their vision. You got fantastic them. energy. I love it. You all ask me about books all the time. How did that person write a book? Why? How did they collaborate on a book? And I know you all have ideas, so I want you to reach out to Suzanne. Go to prominencepublishing.com or go to the Facebook, uh, what is it? Books book Made Publishing. Simple. Book Publishing book Made Publishing. Simple made simple. I'll put all those links below, Thank uh, but you. reach out to her. Don't you love that energy, y'all? Uh, this is a great way to get your <laughs> out. You're amazing, Suzanne. Oh, Thank you so much. I want you to come God. back on. Thank You're motivating, you. inspiring, and you are the breath of fresh air that I think a lot of people who are dealing with the imposter syndrome, who really, really do have something to say and do want to yeah. have a client attracting book uh, you're the, you're their person. And, and I know that they're going to love you, you just as thank much you. as I do. Suzanne, thank you so much. Thank Go to prominencepublishing.com. We'll see you guys soon. Have a good one. Get your book out there. You're not an imposter. I promise. All right. We'll see you later.